next year in Jerusalem. For centuries, Jews in the diaspora have sung this at the end of their Seder meal, a reminder of living in exile and yet looking forward back to the future next year in Jerusalem. I'm standing alone in Oxnum Chapel, thinking of all those who have worshiped here, and especially the graduates of 2020, who are now dispersed across the country and around the world. Each of you will receive your diplomas in the mail soon. But we have prepared this broadcast as a foretaste, because next May all are welcome back to the ingathering of the Wesley community at the National Cathedral to receive those diplomas symbolically and celebrate in person next year in Jerusalem. On behalf of the Board of Governors, faculty and staff of Wesley Theological Seminary, I congratulate the 2020 graduates, the 138th class of this seminary to receive master's and doctoral degrees. 133 men and women have earned their diplomas this year. They came to us from college and military service and nonprofit work from lives as pastors, parents, teachers, lawyers, police officers, diplomats, social workers, and soldiers. They come from across the United States and from 12 other countries, China, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Germany, Indonesia, Italy, Kazakhstan, Korea, Liberia, Nigeria, Sri Lanka, Tanzania, and Togo. They exemplify our quest to build communion in our diversity, a communion of nations and cultures, gender and race and age and creed from 18 Christian denominations. About 65% of the master's students will enter the pastoral ministry or the international mission field, but others are headed for specialized ministry to bring good news to the poor feed the hungry, clothe the naked, welcome the stranger, and advocate for justice and peace. To those who are about to graduate, it is our prayer that you have found this institution to be a means of grace, that here you have learned to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind, and that you leave here prepared to love God and neighbor with all your strength. We are proud of you. When we gather next in physical space, three of the beloved members of our community will have had retired without a proper goodbye. 
professors Lucy Hogan and Eileen Gunther, and Joanne Rutledge, who has worked with me for 30 years. I thank them for their remarkable ministry. Let us pray. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom, we are taught the way and the truth. Bless these students as they now finish their courses of study. We thank you for those who taught and worked beside them, all who supported them along the way. Walk with these graduates as they leave and move forward in life. Take away their anxiety. Strengthen their many talents and skills. Instill in them a confidence in the future you plan, where energies may be gathered up and used for the good of all people. And all this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we celebrate the accomplishments of our graduating students, we want to acknowledge those learning partners and settings for our students in the practice of ministry and mission program. These important field education experiences and the contributions of the learning partners are an important element in our Master of Divinity students' experience. We thank you for your contributions. Each year, the faculty select students to receive special awards, and this year is no different. You see them listed in the graduation announcement. We congratulate all those students and will honor them in a separate video. Congratulations. Each year, Wesley Theological Seminary lauds the accomplishments of certain alumni by bestowing on them the honor of joining in a select group of individuals who truly embody the ethos of the seminary. This august group of people are known as the Society of John Wesley. This award is given to grads who exhibit a high standard of devotion and commitment to God, to the church, and to Wesley Theological Seminary. The two recipients of the Society of John Wesley Award are the Reverend Dr. Joseph Daniels Jr. and the Reverend Dr. Rhonda Van Dyke. The Reverend Dr. Daniels is a author, a theologian, a consultant, a barrier breaker, and a bridge builder. Serving Emory Fellowship in the Washington metropolitan area for over 25 years as the lead pastor, Dr. Daniels has redefined how people think about real church. Real meaning relevant, enthusiastic, authentic, and loving. Along with serving in multiple ministry roles in the Baltimore Washington Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, Dr. Daniels is also a field education supervisor, a pastor to pastors, an adjunct professor at Wesley Theological Seminary, and a Wesley Council donor. The Reverend Dr. Rhonda Van Dyke is a scholar, a social justice advocate, an innovator, and a public servant. For over 25 years, Dr. Van Dyke has been committed to changing lives of people through ministry and higher education. Serving as the Vice President of Student Life at Shenandoah University, Dr. Van Dyke has helped guide the college experience for thousands of students at the university. She too has served in multiple ministry roles in the Virginia Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. Dr. Van Dyke has been instrumental in creating different initiatives at Wesley Theological Seminary, such as Calling 21, which helps prospective students discern their call to ministry. We are extremely excited to welcome both the Reverend Dr. 
Joseph Daniels Jr. and the Reverend Dr. Rhonda Van Dyke to this elite group of alumni. Welcome and congratulations. God of love and kindness, God of memory and hope. We give thanks for new visions and ancient tales, for the songs of the psalmist, for the vision of prophets, for the courage of those who have walked in your ways. For all of these gifts, let us give thanks to our God. God of breath and hope, God of parable and story. We give thanks for friends and family, for generous strangers, and for all whose gift of time and money bring freedom to study and opportunity to learn. For all these gifts, let us give thanks to our God. God of faith and knowledge, God of strength and compassion, we give thanks for teachers and learners, for those who serve us and those whom we serve, for those whom we follow and those whom we lead, for those who pray for us and those who need our prayers. For all these gifts, let us give thanks to our God. We know our hope rests on divine promises. We look to God for a spirit of willingness, courage to witness, and strength to lead. We give thanks for the love and support of our families and communities of faith. We believe that God shows us where love, hope, and faith are needed and help us to act with wisdom and courage. We give our thanks for all these gifts and for the many more that will fill our hearts with gratitude and our mouths with words of praise. Blessed are you, Holy One, maker of all, who has filled us with your spirit and given us eternal life in Christ. Amen. Before the present crisis, United States Senator Chris Coons of Delaware agreed to be our commencement speaker. Little did we know how prescient that was because just as we are watching Dr. Fauci these days as a trusted voice on the medical aspects of the pandemic, Senator Coons has frequently been called on to speak to the political and legislative challenges. He has emerged over the years as a strong voice for job creation and the innovation economy, responsible deficit reduction, progressive social justice, and forward-looking foreign policy. He serves on the appropriations, foreign relations, judiciary, small business, and entrepreneurship and ethics committees. I wish all of our national political leaders has the same credentials he does, which is a seminary degree. Chris is a graduate of Amherst with a BA in chemistry and political science and earned his law degree from Yale Law School and a master's in ethics from Yale Divinity School. He also studied at the University of Nairobi in Kenya. Chris grew up in the Pike Creek and Hokusin areas and lives in Wilmington, Delaware with his wife, Annie, and their three children, Michael, Jack, and Maggie. When we informed him we were going to have to cancel the service, he volunteered to speak anyway. I am very grateful. And I welcome him from his home in Wilmington, Senator Chris Coons. Thank you, President McAllister Wilson, and greetings to all of you, the graduates of the Wesley Theological Seminary Class of 2020. Let's begin in prayer. Please join me. Lord, we are here today in celebration of these graduates who will go out into the world to spread your gospel, to bring to others the comfort and goodness that only comes from you. We are here today to recognize and celebrate their ministry, their work, sharing your love, your light, and helping to build your kingdom. We ask you to provide these graduates with the strength and wisdom they'll need 
to inspire your flock and bring them closer to you. We also ask your grace on the men and women around the world who have been impacted by this pandemic. We thank you for the first responders, the orderlies, the nurses, the doctors, and so many others who are putting their own lives on the line to protect all of us. May we all be inspired by their example of service and sacrifice and love for their brothers and sisters. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm honored to join you for today's commencement, for the 138th commencement ceremony of Wesley Theological Seminary. This is a challenging time for our communities, our nation, and for all of us. It's a time that requires faith and humility, which is why I'm so glad to be able to address you, today's graduates of the class of 2020. If there's ever been a time when you've been needed, when your work and your connection to the transcendent matters, it's now. You are the ones who, through your witness and your pastoral care, will remind us that even in the darkest of times, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So thank you for having me today. Thank you to President David McAllister Wilson. Thank you to the faculty, in particular to Professor Eileen Gunther, um, to other faculty members, to the board members, to everyone who makes Wesley such a special place. To the families and friends of today's graduates, thank you. Because without you, these amazing men and women would not be here today. And most importantly, I'd like to congratulate today's graduates. Your accomplishments are not only the product of your hard work, but of the commitment, love, and sacrifice of so many others in your lives. You attended Wesley to serve others and to walk humbly with our God. But I also want to urge you to take a moment today, congratulate yourselves, actually be proud of what you've accomplished. I have some small idea how you're feeling today because it wasn't all that long ago I also received a degree from a divinity school, Yale Divinity School in New Haven. I didn't go there initially to study ethics or divinity. I went to study law, but through a long and roundabout path, I found myself called to divinity school. As a fellow graduate, I have a sense of what it means to not just choose, but to be drawn, even called, to a special sort of formation and education. What you're finishing today isn't business school or medical school or even law school. None of you came to divinity school as a way to secure a lucrative career. You came because of a calling, a calling to invest your time, your energy, your gifts in studying God's word and allowing it to illuminate your soul and to prepare you or sustain you in serving others through ministry. I am in awe of what you have undertaken, what you've accomplished, and what you will do. God has truly blessed the world with people like you, willing to give so much of themselves and the faculty, family, and friends who've helped you along the way at Wesley. It's also worth pointing out, you didn't decide to go to just any seminary. You chose to come to this seminary in our nation's capital. You've been trained to minister to congregations and communities, but Wesley's also prepared you to engage and to witness in the public square. Many of you have already started this through uh, internships and partnerships with advocacy organizations uh, on Capitol Hill and elsewhere. I pray you'll continue to raise your voices in the public square because they're needed to advocate for better policies, to speak up for the voiceless, and to build political change around biblical values that you've studied and strengthened here at Wesley. In doing so, I hope you'll bring a much-needed sense of openness, trust, and common purpose to our politics. Your graduating class includes men and women from 18 different denominations from nations stretched across the globe and from a wide range of cultural backgrounds. Wesley's work to emphasize and foster diverse political and theological perspectives on campus and your classrooms. And I trust you've benefited from this diversity and found that when we listen more than we talk, something senators are terrible at, but when we listen more than we talk, we can better understand one another and understand our own beliefs, values, and priorities. And if we listen hard enough, we can hear God's voice calling us and leading us. That won't be easy, always, to replicate away from Wesley's campus. It may be difficult to replicate in the world of policy and politics and the demands you'll face every day in either a congregational pulpit or in service in another way, but your training and your education will have prepared you to do just that. I think one of the great challenges facing our nation and that you will also face is balancing the demands of, of politics and division and faction, whether in your broader community the congregation you serve, your denomination. And to find a way to approach all of this with the patience and humility we're called for and to deliver healing, but to not shrink from the faithful witness for which you've been trained and to which you've been called. Like all of you, I wish today we were together in person to celebrate this joyous and special event. 
some ways, though, it is fitting to begin or to continue a life of ministry in unforeseen, anxiety-inducing, and difficult circumstances, because it's exact, it's, it is exactly in moments like this, moments defined by uncertainty, fear, doubt, and anxiety, when your faith, your witness, your training will be needed most. As Kierkegaard famously once said, faith sees best in the dark. This current pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic, is not only a source of anxiety and upheaval in our broader world, though, there are other sources of change and challenge you'll have to confront. Our world's rapid pace of globalization has produced amazing developments for people around the world, but it's also fractured us, our society and our communities, in new and challenging ways. People around the world feel less connected to communities and institutions that have provided a, a framework, a founding for generations. While we've developed more technology and more wealth than ever before, much of our world is still beset by inequality, by disease, poverty, and a lack of basic human rights that we are called to speak to. Here in the United States, our politics and our culture are more mean-spirited and divisive than we've seen in generations. And the inequality that besets our society is the sharpest I've seen in my lifetime. So as you move forward in your careers, many of you will be asked to take on a a great but challenging mission to lead churches with splintered pews, leaky pipes, missing shutters where attendance, participation, support, and engagement isn't as great as it was in the past is dwindling and where the financial challenges will be pressing. At the same time, your congregation's needs, particularly in the face of this pandemic, will be intense and sometimes desperate. You'll be asked to console and support seniors facing loneliness or health issues, financial challenges, and to inspire and engage young couples and engage children and young people looking for direction and purpose in an uncertain world. What a wonderful, what a challenging, what a remarkable mission you're embarking on. A life in ministry in a world infected not just literally by a virus, but in which you'll face the greater infections of distrust and division, powerful forces that will seek to drown out your voice and minimize your impact. What a time then to hear that greatest voice, to defy the odds and to live boldly, faithfully, and to walk humbly with our God. What a time for an example of servant leadership to your communities, to your countries, and to our world. I just want you to know how much I value your ministry and your commitment from two very different perspectives that inform my own work. First, as an elected official who respects the separation of church and state, I feel our country desperately needs people like you who understand and are trained in building community and bringing people together. The families, congregations, and communities you'll serve are some of the most important in American life. And when you strengthen the foundations of family life and of faith, you serve and strengthen our country. More personally, though, as a congregant and a believer, I can tell you that the world needs your ministry, not just as those trained in the techniques of theology, the insights and skills of hermeneutics, but as witnesses, as pastoral and personal witnesses to the transforming sacrifice of Christ and the all-embracing love of our God. The world needs, now more than ever, women and men like you who can help us connect with our God, find meaning and purpose in our lives, and speak up for the dignity of each and every one of our brothers and sisters. So throughout your lives and your ministry, you will be competing with loud and persuasive voices, urging people to think and act narrowly and selfishly. But your example, your voices and your actions can and must be the clearest and the strongest ones. You're the people who've accepted the challenge and the calling to bring a message of love, service, and humility for our world when it needs it most. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'll pray for your strength and your success every step of the way. One day soon, I hope we'll have a chance to rejoice in your achievement together in person, not as it is today through a glass darkly, but then face to face. In the meantime, though, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to speak with you on this special day. The work you have ahead of you will be difficult and challenging, but know that you have the love, support, and faith not only of your own friends and family, not only this wonderful network from Wesley and the gratitude of millions of believers around the world, but that you will have walking with you each and every step of the way the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The pastoral needs and demands you'll face will be great, but the most important thing you must do is to walk with our Savior, morning, noon, and night. Walk with Him. Thank you, and God bless you.
Now is the moment that we've all been waiting for. We come now to the conferral of degrees. Mr. President, Subject to the completion of all requirements as prescribed by the Board of Governors and the faculty of Wesley Theological Seminary, these candidates listed today are presented for receipt of the appropriate master's and doctoral degrees. Upon the recommendation of the faculty by the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors as president of Wesley Theological Seminary, I confer upon each of you who has completed the requirements, the master's or doctoral degree for which you are listed in the commencement announcement, together with all rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Receive now this benediction. Now more than ever, we are aware that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. So let us run with perseverance the race that has been set before us from the God who created us with the Christ who guides us, emboldened by the Holy Spirit. Let us commence the ministry for which we have prepared. Amen. <laughs>